How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs and I want to do a little test today and that test is going to be specifically addressing the most common feedback I get from professionals on Wago 221 lever nuts. That piece of feedback is usually, nope, those guys are no good, they're prone to failure, they create heat, and there's not enough contact surface area. So today, kind of once and for all, I actually want to test that. The way we're gonna test it is we're gonna power a heater and a heat gun off the same circuit. We're gonna use the EcoFlow Delta Pro and its ability to put out 30 amps at 120 volts, and we're actually gonna go beyond the capabilities of these circuits. We have some 20 amp receptacles that are powered by 12 gauge Romex. This traditionally is what you'd see on a 20 amp circuit in your home. Now we're gonna push this to 22, 24, maybe even 26 amps to see how hot do we get these different components. Starting off, we're just gonna set a baseline. I'm gonna take the black hot conductor directly into the receptacle and then we'll power the space heater and the heat gun for 15 minutes taking temperatures every five minute intervals. We'll see how hot things get from that and that sets our baseline. Then we're gonna test the wire nut. We'll splice the hot conductor, test the wire nut and see how hot this gets running the same amount of current for the same duration of time, testing at five, 10 and 15 minutes. And then we'll finish off with the Wago lever nut. How hot does this Wago lever nut get? Is there some validity to that concern? Is this something that you should be concerned using these around your house? Because I personally use these around the house on my DIY electrical projects. I recommend them quite a bit. They're on my Amazon store through the electrical sections with all different types of kits that you can get for your projects. But do they stand up when we put them to heavy loading of things like a space heater? and a heat gun on that same circuit. Kind of an extreme example. And by the way, do not try this at home, but we are gonna try it here, so let's jump into it. So I'll turn that space heater on to the max setting and then adjust the heat gun to the max fan setting and also crank that temperature up to about the last setting, one from the last setting. What does that equal? Well, we can go over to the EcoFlow Delta Pro and see what wattage is putting out. Right at about 2,800 watts. If we divide that by 120 volts, we see we're delivering about 23 amps to the circuit. Now I do want to make this as realistic as possible. So for this test, I'm going to put a face plate on and also a little blank in that decora hole there so we don't reject more heat. We don't dissipate or get rid of more heat than we would in a normal setup. And then the way that we'll actually measure the heat is with this FLIR thermal imaging camera that goes right in the end of your iPhone super handy and this is the type of images it gives you you just put your crosshairs on the point that you actually want to test we can see the plug is about 84 degrees fahrenheit this is the baseline condition after five minutes of running and now look inside to see the screw terminal for the baseline i really want to see that screw terminal where the hot conductor comes in and the highest temperature i'm seeing there is about 84 degrees fahrenheit now I won't show you every interval, but for example, this is our fourth interval at the baseline after 20 minutes of operation, which I decided to go 20 instead of 15, and that's going to give us in the baseline condition 98 degrees Fahrenheit, how hot that screw terminal got. So that's our baseline condition. And just to be noted, you saw the wire going straight into the back and that's where we are measuring, right at that screw terminal for our baseline condition. What was the temperature at the interface between the receptacle and the conductor coming in? That's what I wanted to measure. I'll put together a full chart and then also the graphs comparing the standard baseline state, the wire nut here, and then we'll move on to the WAGO and compare those and see truly how much more heat does that WAGO create than the baseline and the wire nut? Now for the wire nut, I did not pre-twist. I followed the instructions on the package. I did no pre-twisting, so I let the wire nut do the work for me. Now this wire nut's rated for two 12 gauge strands, just like we have, but it is a little small, so it is quite a bit harder to get some torque and actually get the twist that you want but I wanted to follow the instructions of the manufacturer and then I'll show you that actual twist at the end because something tells me with that wire net actually twisted off, that is not gonna have a mechanical hold on those wires like you get if you pre-twist, which I know some of you guys do. So I'm gonna crank up the heaters and let's test out the wire net to see how it compares to the baseline condition. So here's after five minutes and I've taken the blank out so we can see the wire net right there. Now, when we hover over the wire nut, we'll see that we're getting 94 degrees Fahrenheit is the temperature on average, uh, the highest temperature spot that I'll find. Now this after 10 minutes, and do know the Romex itself will heat up. So the Romex will get to about 82, 83, 84 degrees Fahrenheit, 
while this wire nut on the second interval will go all the way up to 97 is the hot spot. And then for our last interval after 20 minutes, We'll see with the hot spot here at the wire nut, we're looking at about 105 degrees Fahrenheit. So considering the load of 23 amps, which is well above what you would get in this normal circuit, right? A 20 amp breaker would trip at that 20 amps and not deliver any more. We only got up to 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Now looking at the actual packaging itself, it says it's rating for 221 degrees Fahrenheit. So we are well below that maximum specification for this wire nut. But the question is, what about this Wago lever nut? Now the main point for Wago lever nuts where pros give feedback and say, no way I wouldn't use those is it doesn't have enough contact area. What it does, instead of twisting those wires together like you get in a wire nut, it actually just lays the conductors across a bus bar. Then a spring presses those conductors down and holds it against the bus bar. And that is how the current is transferred from one conductor to the next. The question is, is that good enough? But that's where we're gonna test it. And then we'll compare all those numbers at the end to see what we get across the three different scenarios. And then just demonstration, because it wasn't clear, between each test point, I would remove that blank take the measurement with the FLIR thermal imaging and then replace it so it held the heat between the five minute intervals. So testing out the first, after first five minutes with the Wago lever nut, we're gonna get 103 degrees Fahrenheit. And I did take a few other data points, but this is after 20 minutes. So this is the max temp we're gonna get here. And taking a look, it does do a recalibration there in the middle, but about 115 degrees Fahrenheit is as hot as the Wago lever nut got. So let's compare everything now and what is the conclusion? Okay, so the results are in and I made a little chart and associated graph so it's easier to visualize. There is a lot of different data points and the three different scenarios, a lot to keep track of. So if you look at the chart, you'll see in the B column, you'll see the baseline and the four temperatures we took then our second run, which was with the wire nut, and then our third run with the Wago lever nut, the 221 lever nut. Now, if we look at the graph itself, this pictorially is much easier to compare between each one. Now, the baseline, as expected, was the lowest, so the temperatures that we were seeing were really almost the temperature of the plug itself coming out of the receptacle. Now, the wire nut has a little bit more resistance in that connection, as the current goes across the two conductors and as such creates a little bit more heat, but the Wago lever nut, there is some truth to the people giving feedback that it doesn't have enough contact surface area. Well, it has less contact surface area, creates more resistance, thus creates more heat, but it's all relative to what? So if we look at our chart itself and I change something around here, where we bring in our max temperature rating for both the wire nut and also the Wago 221 lever nut. The max rating on these is 221 degrees Fahrenheit. So bringing that in gives you a whole different perspective. Now you wouldn't want to see these components go over 221 degrees Fahrenheit because that would be outside of the design range. And you can see across all of these scenarios, we are well below the design range even with the 23 amp load for 20 minutes. So what do you think? I'm interested to hear your guys' feedback. For me, this gives me more than enough confidence to continue using the Wago 221 lever nuts and have full confidence that they're gonna stand up to anything I throw at them in my residential use at my own home. But again, the choice is yours. Hopefully this just gives you a little bit more information on your projects at home and what kind of wire connectors are you using. Now, if you want to learn a little bit more about Wago 221 lever nuts and specifically their new inline splice, the 2401, check out this video right here and I'll walk through the three different scenarios I use them around my house and make them super handy and a standard part of my electrical kit. So thanks for joining me in this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.